Hello, welcome to Curious Moose Crafts. Today I'm going to show you a video on how to make this gift bag cauldron for Halloween. So this one obviously doesn't look like a gift bag, it doesn't have any handles, but here's my first version that I made. Um, that you can see it does have this glittery handle on it. Um, I'm going to be filling these with some goodies for Halloween um, in these little cellophane gift bags where I've just put some different coloured um, orange and yellow card in to make it sort of look like flames so that'll be my my finished gift bags um, and this is um, sort of my my second one that I've made that I've um, decorated using the monster bash suite so I'm going to show you how to make the whole cauldron itself and um, there's a principle to go along with this um, video that you can access via my blog post which will be linked below um, the principle will give you sort of these two templates that will make life easier if you choose to put this together. There's this uh, heptagon that we need twice for the base and these sort of leaves that um, and it's this bit that goes around the outside. So let me show you how we're going to put it together. So this is just using A4 cardstock and you're going to need an 11 and a half by seven and a quarter piece and then you probably need another uh, couple of pieces uh, to use with the template as well. So on the long edge, we're gonna score at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, ten and a half. So these measurements will be on the blog post as well. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and we're going to do a quarter inch, half, one, <laughs> one and a half, <laughs> and then it's two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. So easy enough. So that's all of the scoring that we need to do to put the scoreboard away. So this is going to make your main sort of base for the cauldron. And what we're aiming to look at is getting it shaped up like this. So the easiest way I've found to do that is we're going to cut off our excess bits first. So I've got these big shears from um, Tim Holtz Tonic Studios that are perfect for doing this with. So what we want to keep is just above these sort of bigger rectangles, there's this first thin strip. That's going to stay in one piece all the way along sort of throughout this cutting process. So sort of bear that in mind. So. We're going to leave that piece that I've just mentioned there. So we're going to cut the two smallest and then one of the sort of medium rectangles. And then we're going to cut off everything else apart from that little strip there. So that's all of our excess. So we're going to keep everything else, but we're going to do a fair bit more cutting. So. What I found is a good thing to do now is to sort of stick this top piece. Um, so I've got some um, half inch sort of, uh, double sided tape here, or you can use two sets of the um, tearing tape that's quarter inch from Stampin' Up. So if you stick this down, just on that sort of first medium rectangle here, and I'll show you. So we've got the two little ones and then these two medium ones. We've got the one that's completely solid all the way along and then we've got the sticky top here. And then we're gonna fold this bit down. So. Take that off. Fold that over. And then we're going to cut all the way up 
all of these lines to this solid bit. So I'm going to keep this solid all the way. I'm going to cut all of the bigger rectangles basically up this way. It's going to end up looking like a bit of a spider. So the reason that I sort of created this cauldron, well, I decided that I wanted a cauldron for the little gift bags for a Halloween party that I'm throwing. Um, and I started looking online for another template to use because I started trying to do one myself and it didn't go very well the first time, which I'll show you later on in this video. So I went to have a look at other templates and there was just so fiddly that it was just going to take way too long because I want to make quite a few of these for the party. Um, and it was just so complicated. It looked good, but it was just, it was going to be way too much gluing and waiting and holding. So this template is a lot easier that I came up with as my sort of second attempt. So all the way along there, and then you're going to do the same, but just with these little bits along the top. So because I've doubled it over and we've got thick cardstock, I find it helps just to sort of push the end of the scissors in. Save your hands. So that's sort of our big spidery cauldron. And we're now just gonna sort of fold up all of these lines, which you could have done before you cut it, but I have found that it's easier to, to cut those long lines when it's not already been folded. So you don't need to burnish it with a bone fold or anything. Um, but just me teasing out a little bit. Oops, not cut that one all the way up. Yep. And then I'm gonna glue this together like the skeleton that I showed you earlier. And for that, that's where um, the template comes in that I mentioned. So I've got that spidery bit and then we've, what I've done is I've printed out my two pieces of template and I've backed it on some card because I said I'm making quite a few of these so it's just making life a lot easier so we're going to need two of the bases and then seven of these um, leaves which we'll come back to in a minute so you just need one of the bases for now and what we're going to do is so that, that's going to be your outside of your cauldron and this is actually going to be the inside piece so that it looks nice and sort of neat at the end. So in terms of gluing, we want to glue these on the bottom of it like that. Um, so I'll just do that all the way along and I'll probably speed up this bit of the video because you're going to get a bit bored otherwise. So I did find that just doing a Gluing up a couple of these at a time um, worked quite well. Because if I did more than that, I ended up crossing them over each other too much and getting glue everywhere. So there he is, he's gonna go on like that. So using Tombow gives you a little bit of a extra leeway in terms of the gluing so you can roughly place it and then turn it over to line it up exactly. show you later on a, another use for this template which some of you may have already thought of um, but how I had it folded in there basically if you want to make a pumpkin that's the way that I did that so let me just show you him quickly so using the same template just in orange cardstock I made this little pumpkin and that was from having the inside folded in rather than folding it sort of out of the top like I've got here 
you can use the same same template, same process, but keep that top bit folded in, and make yourself a little pumpkin. So now we've basically got that same skeleton that I showed you before, and we just need to glue this on the top. So it's up to you whether you put it on the outside or the inside, because I'm going to run ribbon around the outside um, to cover up my joins. I think it's better to to just put it on the outside. So just stick him on to join the top and our skeleton is basically done. So yeah, it looks like that. So you can basically bend him, push him down a bit more, which we'll do when we're um, attaching the other sides. But you're starting to get the idea. So the next bit, I'm gonna do a, here's one I prepared earlier. So. With my leaf template, I've cut out um, seven, seven of these basically, seven leaves, all black, plain black. And then what I did is used the uh, summer cut stylish scroll embossing folder um, on all seven of them. So just move this out of the way for a second. So most of what I've used today is from the Monster Bash suite. Um, so for the decoration um, you saw earlier, I was using the Spectacular Bash, the ornate frames and the Monster Bash enamel shapes. Um, we're also going to use the ribbon for the outside and this scroll and folders um, what we're getting into now. So you can fit two leaves on um, a single sort of run through your embossing folder. So you want to turn it that way around. Oh, well, it doesn't matter because the leaf will be even. So you put them in, you can fit two in at a time, run them through the embossing folder. And you'll end up with uh, with these sort of looking like, like this plain version. So that's gone through the embossing folder. There's a little bit that was left at the top. Um, so then what I've done is I've brushed them with this uh, new Delicata Silver Shimmer. Um, it also comes in gold and copper, so you could use use either. And then um, to sort of get that rubbed look that I've got here, um, I basically used this um, sort of uh, plastic silicon spatula I've got. Um, and if you just sort of dab it on here and then sort of lightly rub on here in different areas. And then once you've rubbed a bit of it off, you can sort of rub a bit more to get it a bit lighter. Um, and do it in some different directions. And that's basically what I've done to the others. Um, but I figured you don't need to sit me, watch me sit and do this seven times. It's just to give you an idea on the technique. So you don't need to be too precious about it because we are going for that rustic look. Um, but yeah, it's just a bit of a an, an idea of how you can you can get this sort of shimmery metal. Effect. Okay, so there's him. So times seven. That's what we need. We need seven seven of them. So we've got my seven here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so where you've got this little extra bit from the embossing folder, you just need to fold that down and then cut that in half. And that's gonna help us stick it to the top of the cauldron, basically. So I'll leave him to dry a bit more as the last one and we'll speed this up again, but I'm gonna glue on all of these to the side here. So that bend is going to go in right there. I'm going to glue those on and then that just glues on the bottom. And once you've done that all the way around, that's what you'll end up with. So I'll just go ahead and start doing that now. So just a little bit on here, a little bit on here. And this is probably the faffiest bit. Um, so it's a lot better if you 
can have the time to sort of sit and hold these top bits and wait for them to be glued before mo moving on to the next bit. Um, because if you do it too fast, um, they do pop off a bit. That's what I found when I was doing them anyway. Um, but honestly, the other templates that are sort of doing it, they had little sort of tabs all the way along. So I got every crease down here all the way along. We were gluing every single little bit and waiting and holding it. And I just thought, life is too short. Like I'm, you know, I love crafting and spend a lot of time crafting, but the effort was just not worth it for the benefit. So I'm quite happy with them. Um, with these little cauldrons that I've made, I think they look pretty effective and I, th I think they look nearly or just as good as the examples I was looking at that were a lot more effort to be honest. So yeah, I've got a bit of, bit of faff and a bit of gluing, but not too much. So that last piece of um, base I mentioned earlier, you don't have to use, but just to tidy up that, that bottom piece, that's what, what he's for. So we'll just do that now as well. And I'm pretty sure that'll be us done with the Tombow. Don't hold me to it. You know, fit your hand in there, which is quite helpful as well, obviously, for for making it for gluing these bits down. So it's a it's a good sized box bag bowl, whatever you want to call him. So on the top here, that extra little quarter score line, um, it's just to help you fold down these to make it look like a bit more of a, a round rim on the top. You can just fold them over. Okay. So that could be, it could be the end, that could be your cauldron all done basically. Um, but as I said, I'm going to put this ribbon around the top here. So I don't know about you, but I struggle with ribbon <laughs> and sticking ribbon to things. So I've got two different methods of um, adhering this, or two different adhesives to stick this ribbon down. Um, so for doing the rim, I've been using this um, uh, scalloped ribbon, scalloped edge ribbon, which is again part of the Monster, ba Monster Bash suite, and you need 11 inches of it. It's just down to about there. Well. 
So, if you get your tearing tape, stick that to it. I don't think it matters which side, actually. That'll give you sort of most of your hold, but I have found that um, using some extra mini glue dots at the ends will just give you that extra hold to keep it in place. So I would recommend doing that as well. So if you just stick this tear and tape all the way along. And then take this off. Can. We'll find the edge. Oh, pitter patter of more tiny feet, tiny cat feet. Thanks. Yep. So, stick this on. Where's my mini glue dot? Sorry, hit the camera. Right. Mini glue dots. So we'll stick that one on to the end. Give some extra oomph. And we'll start that off here. And then literally just stick it all the way around and it'll just cover those joins. Make it look a bit better. And then stick another glue on the end here. Just doing that a little bit long. Cut that off. Put that glue dot on. And that'll keep him insecurely. And that's your cauldron, which then you can now decorate. So the way that I added on the handles, which I won't show on this video because it will take a while, is just before putting that um, that ribbon on at the end, I'd taken this ribbon, which is from the annual catalogue, which is the glittered organdy ribbon. I took 14 inches of that to get the handle this long. Um, and what I did is I made a little cut in the sides here, poked the ribbon through, glued it down, on the inside and I actually used some black washi tape that I've got just to sort of reinforce that as well. Um, so I glued that down with a mini glue dot and then I put some black washi over the top of it. Did the same on the other side, feeding it through and then put the ribbon on over the top um, to give it a little handle. And then i just show you this decorations that we did on here. Um, so I've just got some black card cut out with the ornate frames from the Monster Bash Suite. Um, and then this stamp is from the Spooktacular Bash stamp set, which there's an ornate frames die that, that matches exactly, basically, um, to cut it out to fit it onto there. Um, I used some sparkly black embossing powder. Um, and then out of these uh, Monster Bash enamel shapes, I just used a couple of these um, little grey ones. Um, and then the little spider is stuck on with um, some black um, dimensionals. Um, and he's from the different street. Is that right? He's from this, so there's this Wicked Dyes um, that's got this really cool um, Wicked, word, the word Wicked Dye. Um, and then also those little spiders. So what I did with the spiders is I've cut out a load of those and then I embossed them with clear embossing powder. So black cardstock, clear embossing powder, and then um, I stuck that hem onto there with just one of the um, mini um, black stamping dimensionals. So the black stamping dimensionals have got um, the big and the little size in the same pack, which is handy. So I stuck on the big sentiment uh, with the big dimensionals and the little tiny spiders stuck on with a little black one which you can barely see which is sort of the point of it being black so that's it really I hope um, it's 
useful to you um, and that you can use the template. As I said, I've also made um, with the same template doing exactly the same as we've done there. Um, but when you glue that final bit, just making sure that the inside's tucked in um, this little pumpkin. Um, and I'll also be doing another quick video on how to make these little broom pencils. Um, and uh, some of the posts that are coming up will be on the mini coffin boxes that are from the same suite. Um, and they have, uh, a, as you can see, I've done the same thing of using the, let me get the word right, stylish scroll embossing folder and then rubbing with the silver on there. Um, and then he's lined inside with ribbon, gorgeous. So we're gonna be having a Halloween-y few weeks on the up to Halloween on my blog. Um, I hope you come over and follow. Um, I'm on Pinterest, Instagram, usual stuff as well if you just wanna have a look at the pretty pictures. Um, and I hope you come by soon. Thanks for being here today. Check out the links below for that, um, for the template. Bye.